in this chapter, we're going to be studying polynomial functions. We're going to be looking at graphs, properties, all sorts of things about them. Now, you should remember what a polynomial is. Here's a formal definition. We have a function of the form, a number times x to the n, plus a number times x to the n minus 1, all the way down to a number times x, then a constant. We're going to say that each of the coefficients, the numbers in front of the powers of x, have to be real numbers. That can be varied later on, but for right now, we're going to stick to things where we've got real numbers. Also, for us to say that it has degree n, that first coefficient can't be a zero. Any of the other ones could be, but that first one can't be. And finally, the coefficients have to be whole numbers. Given the way we've structured this thing, saying that the first one is a whole number means that all the rest of them have to be whole numbers. Now, honestly, you know what a polynomial is. And so just looking at some examples, we've got something like 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. But it's important to realize that those coefficients don't have to be whole numbers. The exponents do, but the coefficients don't. So, the second one, we've got things like the square root of 2 and the 3 fifths. Uh, they don't have to be nice numbers, but still a polynomial. And then finally, this last one, we don't even really need to have any x's. h of x equals 6 would be a perfectly fine polynomial. Fairly boring polynomial, but a polynomial nonetheless. What we really care about here to start off with is thinking about the graphs of these things. So I've got a fairly complicated polynomial here. And I've gone ahead and sketched out what the graph looks like. Now, what are the most important parts, the most important points on this graph? Well, there's a few of these that we've already studied previously. We've got the y-intercept, and in this case we have three different x-intercepts. Here, here, and here, where it crosses actually four different ones over here, these are all x-intercepts. Finally, we've got the points where it sort of turns around. We've got this point down here, we've got this point right here, and this point there. This one at the bottom is what we call the absolute minimum. It's the lowest the function ever gets, the absolutely lowest y value this graph ever has. Now, this point here, it is a maximum, but it's not an absolute maximum because, while it's the highest point, if I look over here, the graph actually gets higher than what that point is. So, we're going to call that a local maximum. Nearby, it's the highest point the graph gets to, but it's not the highest point f overall. Whereas this one down here is the lowest point overall. The graph never gets any lower than that. Similarly, this over here would be a local minimum. These are the types of points that we really want to know in order to find a good graph for what the function looks like. Unfortunately, a lot of times these things are hard to find. The y-intercept's almost always easy. In fact, it is incredibly easy when we got a polynomial. 
the x-intercepts a little bit harder and we're going to be studying some techniques on how to try to find those things that don't always work but there are at least some things to try and in general these maximums and minimums actually the technical term is maxima and minima is those we really need higher mathematics to typically find except in some cases and in fact all these things we've studied already in a particular example if we've got a quadratic function if we've got a quadratic function we should know how to find all of those different things to find the y-intercept all we have to do is plug in 0 and this applies for any polynomial if I plug in 0 for x plug it in for x plug it in for x of course anything times 0 is 0 so the whole thing's just negative 12 and so 0 negative 12 would be the y-intercept for this function for the x-intercepts we want the output we want the y to be 0 so we set the equation equal to 0 and we solve and this one I set up so that it factors nicely we can go ahead and factor out a 2 and once I've factored out a 2 I can see that what remains the x squared minus x minus 6 that factors is x minus 3 times x plus 2 and now we know that if I've got things multiplied together the thing that makes it 0 is when anything the individual factors is 0 3 makes that 0 negative 2 makes that 0 so 3 0 and negative 2 0 are my x-intercepts finally we know that for a quadratic it's a parabola and we've got a vertex which would be the absolute min we can find a vertex with our vertex formula negative b over 2a since b is a negative 2 minus a negative 2 is a positive 2 over 2a 2 times 2 is 4 so 2 over 4 reduces to 1 half then to find the y value all I need to do is plug in 1 half I kind of squeezed it onto a page so I didn't work that all out but you can certainly go ahead and check that you will get negative 12 and a half or negative 25 halves and so the vertex that absolute min is one half negative 12 and a half so at least in this case at least for a quadratic we can find all these points typically though in order to find these things you have to be looking at a graph you have to get a good sketch of what the graph looks like and then figure it out from there what those points are using a graphing utility or something like Desmos online is certainly a good way to get in there and see what these graphs look like in fact for this graph if I come up here that's how I did it I went ahead and went into Desmos plugged in this formula and saw what the graph was